Bicentennial Mall is located at the foot of the Capitol building in Nashville. It includes a beautiful recreation of all of the landscape found across the state of Tennessee. I'm here with Marcus Kursky, whose business, Gardens of Babylon, is located right across from the mall. And you have a gorgeous view, but yes. apparently you noticed something that was going awry? Yeah, the, uh, the trees here really don't look healthy. They have kind of a yellow nature to them, real sparse in their growth. And over the last year, I've really noticed that chlorotic look to the leaves get worse on a lot of the trees and the willow oak is the number one tree used in the park. Um, it spans both of the walkways and is really the statement tree however it's the tree that's doing the worst and as you see a lot of the trees through here have that uh, real sparse nature real yellow look to them and a lot of them are infected by scale and really the result of all of it is the soil and that's where we look to focus. This, uh, this branch here, some of the signs that we're looking at are the, um, the, the ribs of the leaf there, that green look and the, out, the outer um, yellowed, just real splotchy looking, um, even the brown tips in there. And this is actually one of the better looking trees. Another uh, item that we notice on a lot of these trees is they've got this really black kind of carbon look to them as well and um, that is a matter of the bark not really being able to process a lot of the acid rains and other um, things found in our air but uh, the, the branch here is definitely some of the better looking leaves this is uh, the spring's growth and so it's kind of got that flush look to it as they start to go through the summer they really start to die back shrivel up and really not look all that great well, it doesn't sound like a very healthy situation for these trees, and I know they're in a place where they're, they're taking a lot of heat from the sidewalks, and of course, you mentioned the acid rain being in the city, but you said at the beginning that the real problem is the soil. Could you mm -hmm. explain that? Yeah, um, I don't know how this place wound up with such poor soil, but uh, digging a hole and checking that soil out really shows how poor it is. It's, it's compacted, it's really, lifeless. The organic matter really isn't where it needs to be for trees of this size and the goal is to add the life back into the soil and the life comes from the compost and some of the compost teas and also by feeding that soil the foods that those microorganisms um, need to survive and thrive. Well how are we going to do that? This is a, a lot of trees to cover and mm -hmm. you have some fascinating machinery with you. Mm -hmm. So show me what you're going to do with it. Uh, well basically the two apparatuses that we use both come out of a spray tank with a uh, 300 psi hose and this is just a uh, spray gun that varies in the fan to uh, a direct spray and this helps us to get up into the uh, canopy of the tree. Um, and then also spraying the ground around it. The other tool that we use is a injector. And this basically helps to get the solution deeper into the ground. And you can vary the depth um, by that plate there. And it's just a three hole injector that hooks onto the hose and is um, operated by this gun and really helps to get that uh, deeper into the soil so that that life that those microorganisms can begin to build that uh, pore space and build that organic matter cycling the nutrients the leaves that fall the grass that gets cut uh, back into the soil and protecting those roots and creating that uh, necessary soil environment for a healthy tree um, most trees or pretty much all plants have the this biology that feeds off the exudates off the um, carbohydrates that the leaves produce and the leaf produces those so that it can have that biology coating it and protected from some of those diseased elements that come and uh, set in and a lot of the acid rains the sulfuric acids tend to destroy that biology and that beneficial culture that lives on that leaf surface and it's very important to re-inoculate the leaves as well as the soil when restoring the health of the tree. 
And you're using, I imagine, not just any old compost tea that we might make in our own five gallon bucket. Tell me about some of that process and what's special about that tea. The, the tea is special in the sense that it's tested and we send it off to the labs. Um, there's two that we work with in New York and Oregon. Um, Soil Food Web labs are very um, progressive in their nature of testing and really assaying the um, bacteria, fungus, nematode, protozoa contents in that compost and in that tea as well. And it's really important that the compost you use be tested to know which diversities and which species of that biology you're adding into that tea. Um, and in making the tea, you know, there's a lot of uh, terms about compost and compost tea thrown around, but in making good quality tea, you need to test that uh, dissolved oxygen reading and test that level of um, oxygen that those microorganisms feed on, which is so important to making that beneficial um, soil food. Um, you're dealing with soil here and you're dealing with the life that lives in the soil. And so it's not a, a quick fix and there's no short-term answer to restoring the health of a tree. It's, uh, it's a long-term process that really takes several years to really begin building that soil um, back to the state that it needs to be in. Well, it's great that you've got this project out here and the trees are marked. People can come by the Bicentennial Mall and take a look at them and watch them over time. But I know now we're all thinking, well, okay, what about our own homes? What about either trees we're putting in now, mm -hmm. trees we've had a long time, we're not sure how they're looking. Is there something really the homeowner can do to, to think about this and how they can apply this knowledge at home? Yes, and really what it takes is just being informed on what type of compost you're getting from your local nursery as well as the compost teas. I really haven't seen a whole lot of nurseries with uh, compost teas um, yet, but it's very important that it's tested, biologically tested for the levels of uh, microorganisms that exist in it. And um, the benefits not only exist for trees, but lawns as well. You know, here in the South, we get these drought filled summers that really ruin that fescue lawn. And the more organic matter, the more life that we can put in there, the less herbicides and fungicides we'll have to use over the long term. And um, when a homeowner goes to plant a tree, as much beneficial compost and compost tea and some of the foods. Um, should go into that hole with that tree or plant or perennial or whatever it may be um, across the board perennials annuals trees all benefit from life-filled compost all right so look for the live stuff not mm -hmm. the uh, bag stuff that's that's been dried out you can out. still get the life in the bags but um, it's generally going to have to be from a uh, refutable source where it's tested um, biologically and i haven't seen that too much lately all right, so really know what we're doing, know what we're buying. Um, certainly home, home composting and, and doing it correctly, checking mm -hmm. out your sources just mm -hmm. like you would for your plants. And uh, well, hopefully a lot of people can benefit from this information. I know that it, at my own home, certainly using compost has saved me on many of the dry summers. So thank you so much for participating with the state on this project. And we look forward to watching these trees over the next year and see how they're doing. Yeah, thank you.